God is good. All the time. And all the time. Is good. Amen, my friends. If you're announcing story as a course, you can see on the screen behind me or call along your programs as well. Uh, there are guest cards and abuse as well as prayer cards. We'll put the card over. If you're a guest, we'd love for you to pull a card out. It's a prayer request. You can see them inside our programs. We intentionally pray for each other. So just make sure you pull out this card and drop them off in the offering plate right by where they was handing out programs this morning. Youth group, none tonight. And I was still recovered from an annual conference. That event where United Methodists from 700 some churches all over Western Pennsylvania meet together in Grove City. After four days there, yeah, tonight would be a stretch. So there's no youth group tonight. This morning, though, we'll have kids choir practice at about 10 and 10. That is when the pastor stops droning on. And then following that is, of course, our kids' Sunday school. Meanwhile, downstairs as well, we also have our fellowship time. So if you're looking for a cup of coffee, some water, a donut, or whatever delicacies are down there, and that's in between services and as well. Vacation Bible School is coming up July 15th through the 19th. Interested in volunteering and serving, we'd love to have you. Kids anywhere from three years of age-ish through sixth grade. Um, we'll be the kids as well with DBS for leaders around seventh grade and on time. So that's something you or your youngster, grandkids, or whatever are interested in, check it out. Meanwhile, Waldemere Day will be on Saturday, July 27th. That is a great event up at Waldemere Park where um, we have a picnic there. It's a great time. So if you're interested, make sure you sign up for $10 a person. Um, it costs much more than that, but we are blessed to be able to cover much of that cost. So if you're interested, please sign up as soon as possible. Meanwhile, for an announcement that's not on the screen, there's a smile. Our kids' smile day camp will begin. Here's how it's different, though. The pastor will be here at the church Wednesday, so during around lunch time. We're doing something different. If you didn't catch it in the newsletter, we'll actually be at Brandy Springs Park in the community building, and who knows where else in the park, in that um, according to park officials, we can have free reign. <laughs> We're not telling the kids that unless they heard me say it. But beginning June 18th, our day camp will be on Tuesdays. So June 18th, beginning at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., we'll serve lunch. Our attention here is not just for kids from church, but kids from the community to have a meal. We celebrate with a backpack program. And friends, you did an incredible job. But what happens when there is a school? It's not as though parents who are negligent or parents who are fighting with poverty suddenly have a smorgasbord at home in school or at home without school. One way to meet that need is to intentionally one day a week help lead kids. If you're interested in helping with that, contact us in the church office. We need plenty of leader volunteers. Jamie Segula, who is right now working in the nursery, Jamie's our lead person for the Smile Day Camp. So if you're interested in that, talk with Jamie. Um, I say that in 50 to hear her about this morning. That'd be a beautiful thing with terrorize her, terrify her. So, scary things out there. I love it. Think about it. Kids who don't know Jesus Christ, this is one way for us to intentionally tell them who he is while we also spoke about others. So, Smile Day Camp. Also, if you're interested in right now media, you can check that out. The texting information is there or email us at the church office. Great online resources. And meanwhile, for a moment of recognition, one, thanks to Brad Bridges who he and many other trustees can convert, convert and finally decide upon how to fix the hot water, stick it, and pressure at the parsonage. Thank you. Well, he and I were out of town. It was a great gift that you have hot water in the kitchen. So thank you. Also, to Denise Ford, who gave up hours this week, beginning on Wednesday, and it was a gross annual conference. I had to be there for an annual conference every day. Denise gave up her time to be there. So if you get a chance, thank Denise. We didn't wrap up last night until 7 p.m. Denise had to leave a little earlier than that, but she was there every day serving representing you as a church. So if you get a chance, tell Denise thank you. And then I finally, thanks to Dick Carlson, who many incidents came up this week. Um, thanks to Dick, who so aptly and ably covers while I'm away, and all too often covers while I'm still here. So Dave, thank you. Friends, let's greet one another with the love of Christ. <laughs>
Bianca is supposed to like to come forward, that'd be a great thing. Good morning, Tegan. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Adam. Hey, good morning. Okay, buddy. Go. Good morning, Nick. Mom's right there. Hey, I got a question for you. For those of you who are into interior design, what's weird with the colors in here this morning? Right. What's up with that? Do we just run out of different colors? What do you think? Tina, what do you think? Why do we have red on today? Yeah, that is definitely one of the reasons why Jesus shed his blood for us. There's another reason specifically for today. Is it okay if I read it for you? Okay, ready? Here we go. From Acts chapter 2, this is the word of the Lord. So when the day of Pentecost came, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly the sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw the sea that tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they began to speak in other languages as God enabled them. You knew that, Adam? Good stuff, bud. Does that sound crazy to you? So they're all hanging out, they're all spending time, so we're all sitting right here, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, boom, some of this violent wind seems to blow into the place, and tons of fire touch on them. Do not do that at the charcoal grill. Do not run up there and play with the candles and stick your finger on it, because this is going to happen. You will get burnt. That's right. Yeah, that's what she said. That's why I said what you said, Adam. There you go. But they didn't get burnt. Somehow God touched them. God moved them, and they were being able to do incredible things. It goes on to say how they went out and stood out into the street, and they spoke in these other languages. Everybody else in town heard them in their own native language. Not anybody here speaks Spanish. All of us have been wrong. Adam speaks Spanish. Muy bien. Toca esa guitarra. You play the guitar, Adam? Can you play the guitar for us right now? Oh, Aaron, you play the guitar. See, that's what I asked you. So maybe you guys don't speak Spanish. Anybody here speaks French? Parlez vous français? Sure. <laughs> so I asked you if you speak Spanish and you said good. So, oh my goodness. So can you ask, Aaron, can you describe to us why this word is not the word? He doesn't know what word. Bingo. We don't know any words. Imagine, though, know, all of a sudden, God touched you, and all of a sudden, by the Holy Spirit, you were able to suddenly speak in anything from Latin to Pig Latin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but that's what happened that day. We call it Pentecost, which we wear all the red as one of the reminders, key reminders of the blood of Jesus. Two, because it reminds us of the fire. But it touched everybody there. Everyone. They didn't make any distinctions about how old they were, how young they were. It got everybody. So I need your help, okay? We we're going to try to make it look like God's touched everybody the same way here. Are you all healthy? Woo! That feedback is not be fun this morning. Are you guys willing? If you're willing, stand up. If you're not willing, then just remain seated. Awesome. I need your help passing these out. I've got orange ones here. We're good with orange. Rachel, all right. And we can do it red. Just like that. You want red too? Who wants orange? Addy, awesome. What we want to do is get that away. Now you guys also need one too. Here we go. Tegan, you mind orange? You do mind orange. Yeah. Come on, we're rubbing in the red. Okay. <laughs> we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Here we go. I need everybody in this church to have one of these. You ready? Everybody. So make sure you get out. Ladies, I gave you the most, so make sure you get to the back and hand them out. Everybody gets one. Ready? On your mark, get set, no rush, go. Or you're handing one out to each person. Sandy needs one out. Bill needs one. Let's take one orange. If they ask for orange, wait for them.
Does anyone not have one? We may have a few folks in the back here not getting one. Kale looks like he's aching for one. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. If he asked for a red one, just tell him no. <laughs> Since Kale is trying to run both the screen as well as the audio here this morning, talk about um, somebody who was willing to serve. Anybody else need one? You have two, we'll bring one, bring one up here, I'll take the extras. Tina, thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. Addy, you okay with one? Make sure you keep one for yourselves. There, ladies and gentlemen. Adam, you want me on? You need two? You got one for yourself? All right. You got one? Awesome. Rachel, you got your one for one? Thank you. Look, that thing is. All right. We're going to read it one more time. But here's the thing. Every time it talks about people or a group of people, I need to go to a If it talks about the Holy Spirit, that's what you need to do. If you hear fire, that's what you got to do. I'll try to give you a hint, but if you're not paying attention when I say fire. Oh, we're in so much trouble. There we go. Ready? Are you sure you're ready? I can't even find my Bible with my black jacket here. Ready? On your mark and set, go. And when the day of Pentecost came, they were suddenly all together in one place. It sounded like the sound of the blowing of a violent wind. Go, no doubt that that's good. Though the whole house were they were sitting. They saw what look, what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated between the rest on each of them. All, you're the entire death. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. How cool is that? Well, still, can you guys do that one more time? What do you guys think? Do they do that decently well? Should we get a picture of them? Do you think the brothers did all right? Really? You know? I just said they, they and y'all do. Are you having on here? What y'all doing? Oh, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. Let's do it one more time. And you want to take a picture for me? Alright, so you gotta do it. They better keep doing it. They better keep doing it. They, 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 got fire. Okay. You got a picture? You didn't take a picture of your thumb, did you? You got something that goes on at the police. It's pretty bad. God touched every single person there. God doesn't make a decision how old you are, what you look like, if you're cool, if you're not so cool, if you're rich or poor, does not matter. Doesn't matter what you look like on the outside or inside, skin color, where you live or whatnot. God, Holy Spirit. Touch them. Uh oh, I haven't got some issues. Good stuff. You're all on fire. Come on, girl. Now she's going to sleep on me. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, that you are willing to touch each and every one of us. Open us up. Thank God for our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, careful. We don't need to poke any eyes up. Adults, you don't want to lose us today. They may show up a little later today during the sermon. Just saying. So that being said, here's what I have for you guys. We already gave you the one. If you like fireballs, if you remember the fire. Fireballs are right here. What are they, fireballs? What are fireballs? They're like jawbreakers that are pretty much going to almost burn your mouth. Does that sound like something you want? Yeah, I think so. Or if you want some bubble gum, because it's just like the wind. There's gum. I've got gum right here if you like. Finally, if you can't take the gum, if you can't handle the job breakers, and you want some Kit Kats, I have a few leftovers here. Okay? All my Kit Kats, they're worth packaging. That's it. Okay? Fireballs, gum, Kit Kat, whatever you like, go ahead and grab one. Okay, I don't like Well, then don't get a fireball. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm not liking Kit Kats. All right, don't get Kit Kats. We're going to guys. Let me sure I keep them up for this. Great job. Friends, we want to give God thanks for this morning. What was I to pray for who God is? What do we need to be praying for? Linda.
If you didn't hear that, thanks for being going. Thanks, my brother. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Yeah. You can call in Hale and the boys and their families and one of the clips of passing. Yeah. Clifford Hale passed away last week. Um, and so the funeral service, this evening will be tomorrow, 2, 4, 6 to 8. Here at Cunningham's in town, correct? Mm -hmm. And then um, the funeral service will be at Cunningham's Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. So it's a long day. Big thank you. Does it mean I'm Marla? So I'm going next to Chelsea, who's traveling to Vegas, California. Yeah, for kidney transplant. Uh, to, to transplant to a young, young man who's in California. And then two for Daniel, whose breast cancer spread to the liver. That is scary stuff. So be praying for Daniel as well. <coughs> Battling breast cancer that spread to a young daughter. Just like thank you. And it's good to have Caitlin here. Yeah, you. <laughs> I think it's going way back for the cool stuff. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God for who God is. Why not? So thanks be to God that front of bread is actually, I don't want to say cancer free, that's always a tricky thing to say. But then all have to do radiation. Praise be to God that at the very least the cancer is getting held back. Thanks for that. Friends, is there anything else you want to thank God for? Praise God for who God is. Thank you for your prayers as well for us while we were at the annual conference this year at that time where 700 some. Methodist churches with their pastors and lay people meeting at Grove City College with a lot of issues on the docket um, in the midst of a time where some folks can say we've got to love one another and then their practice seems to suggest something else. Um, and thank you for your prayer during that time. Friends, if there's nothing else we need to be praying for, you want to thank God for Praise God for who God is. Let's go to the Lord and let's pray. <coughs> Thank you. 
And so the Holy Spirit came down in tongues of fire with that violent wind and touched each and every person who was in that room. Everyone who had followed Jesus, the, 12, the 11 disciples, the five they just selected, and around 100 other folks. And Father, it touched each and every one of them. And so they had such power and that ability that they were able to speak in different languages as though the Holy Spirit pushed them outside where your power is on display. <laughs> and we hide and we run and we talk about praying to you and somehow seem to hope that you might just do something. Father, forgive us for how we treat you as though somehow you don't have that kind of power. If you created us in the very beginning, if you breathe life within us, you brought about the whole creation of this world and sent your son into it in the miraculous way he came. You can do anything. We get somehow into thinking that we need to neuter who you are and pull back into the power you might have. And yet after Jesus rose into heaven, you empowered the disciples to do even greater things than Jesus did, these signs of resurrection. Wow. Why do we hold back? Father, forgive us for how we simplify or minimize who you are. Move and work in the mighty ways that you can. Is it because we don't give our whole lives over to you? Is it because we hold on to stuff that we'd rather hold on to? Our dreams, our hopes, our security, our finances. My, 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 just like from um, finding email. God, forgive us. It's not mine. I'm not yours. I'm not mine because Jesus came, I became yours. Father, may your Holy Spirit do the work. Touch us and fill us in the way that changed the world. Because the amount of family strife around us, the amount that alcohol and drugs are ripping apart people and families, in the ways that human trafficking is stealing children left and right, in the ways that gang violence so near to us. It's home. We don't even feel safe at church at times because we've seen things on the news. We live in a broken world. Move and work through us, Father. Some of us, we're hurting. We're battling the same demons, the same sins that we've had for decades. Fill us with the power. God, we lifted up many people this morning who need your healing touch. They need the Holy Spirit. We're asking, Father, that you might do the work. Bring about healing and pray. With the battle he's had with cancer for more, for over five years, we're asking, Father, for healing in the name of Jesus. Give him strength. But even greater than strength, Father, we're asking for healing. We're good before you, Chelsea, Father, in the midst of this trip to California for the kidney transplant. Little young man that she is donating a kidney to. We're praying for Chelsea and traveling and healing in Jesus' name. Father, we look before you, Jaylen, in the midst of breast cancer that has been moving to her liver. We're praying for healing in Jesus' name. We pray for our daughter. Pray for healing. We so, Father, so, we thank you because we've seen your hand at work. And the gift that David Cook is, as Linda mentioned at home, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Father, for the healing you brought about in Bonnie Fred. We praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the strength in this game of conference and everything that happened there. We give you thanks for having moved in the world. Because with all the questions that the United Methodist Church has, you're still king of war. All his disciples hiding in a room. You're the one who moved and worked in him and changed the world. So Father, use us in however you would because we love you. We thank you and praise you as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who you are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So uh, I think, Patty, can I blame you for the fact that I just ran right by the song? So it's okay for me to blame you, although it was my fault. Thanks, Patty, for taking that on because, you know, we're just all, I'm just lying up here because. <laughs> I roll right by it. Friends, let's stand together as we sing together.
testimony comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 as we carry on in this summer of love series. Friends, would you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed. We may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. So wait, Roger, did you know you were reading today? Thanks. You are volunteered for this. Uh, I don't know it. Uh oh. There's 66 books in the Bible. Yes. You have to pick the one book that I haven't memorized yet. <laughs> That's awesome. So, what was Acts chapter 2 that we had to read? You don't have time right now. <laughs> Thanks for being so humble about this. 1 Corinthians 1 13, 1 through 13. If I speak in tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, and not easily angry. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always <coughs> preserves, preserves, preserves. Love never fails, but when there are prophecies that will cease, where there are no, where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfection disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know I shall know fully, even if I am fully known. And now these three remain: faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Friends, the word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Larry, some people like us are so late for me to put away those childish ways. I feel like I've been away. Yeah, I know, exactly, because that's one reason we talk about this whole passage in the middle of the summer. Every wedding you go to, it seems like folks are going to read this off. And yet, for how many times I've presided over weddings or met with a couple beforehand, we can talk about a lot, but everybody focuses on the romantic love. And here is talking about the selfless, self-sacrificing love that we see in Jesus. Without practicing that as Christians, I am nothing without love. That's what we get to with this passage. I'm nothing without love. Friends, we're nothing without love. We can do all the cool things that we want to do. We can try to measure up on the world standards. We can be rich. We can be successful. We can have a cool car. Whatever it might be. We may have perfect hair. Without love, it is nothing. I am nothing without love. We can do all the good things. We can show up in church and be that giving person. We can do everything that, as we heard Linda say about David Cook this morning, but without love, it's nothing. For David, it seems to come from love. But we can put on the facade and just make sure that he knows how great we are. Without love, guess what it is? Nothing. Without love, I am nothing. I'm nothing without love. You may have heard this song before from the Doobie Brothers from their 1973 song, Long Train Running. So if you want to hit it, go ahead, Joe.
on going, they pretty much sing the same thing over and over. And Kale's trying to do over and over. PowerPoint at times is not the, uh, the kindest program. And then when you have me putting that in the last minute, it does even more so. And yet the words go like this with the doobie brothers. Gentlemen who are much better known for thinking that smoking pot was a great way to live life than getting at the depths of Christian love. But the words are like this. Down around the corner, a half a mile from here, you see them old trains running, and you watch them disappear. Without love, where would you be now? No, no, no. Without love, I won't sing it for you, but I sure want to. My uh, classic rock background sure wants to go on. But without love, where would you be now? Hmm. Then the song goes on and on and on about the same old thing. And gives it the idea of a guy stuck on the railroad, one looking for love that he's lost. Without love, where would you be? Now they miss the mark because for the Doobie Brothers are pointing out romantic love and finding somehow thinking that all life is put together is just romantic love. But we miss the mark as Christians when we talk about love and get fixated on Valentine's Day love instead of the sacrificial, selfless love that we see in Jesus. Without love, I am nothing. Without the love of God, I am nothing. We talked about it last week. We talked about how Jesus celebrated, showed the disciples the full extent of his love as he washed their feet. We, we, we talked about it last week as Jesus showed the disciples the full extent of his love as he celebrated the Lord's Supper with them. This is my body, broken for you. This is my blood, shed for you. We talked about the full extent of Jesus' love as he went to the garden and prayed and they arrested him and then they began to beat him and they had trumped up uh, charges against Jesus and, and they had a trumped up trial and they beat him and spit on him and ridiculed him and forced him to go out to uh, the place of the skull, the skull of Golgotha, carrying his own cross which he could barely handle. We talked about the full extent of his love as he was so weak and he couldn't even carry his own cross, almost being made fun of for being a weakling. Talk about the full extent of his love as Jesus was on the cross for three hours. God, we talked about the full extent of God's love as he soon didn't have the final say. Where of death is your sting? Because we talked about the full extent of God's love as Jesus rose from the dead. Not only that, that he rises from the dead from the very first Easter, but 40 days later, as we celebrated last week, he rose into heaven. That's why we have the white balloons. He rose into heaven. He ascended into heaven, showing us the full extent of God's love, because death is dead. For those of you in Jesus Christ, death is dead. Jesus is alive. He prays for us now as Jesus continues to show us the full extent of his love. And then as we celebrate it today, there we go, with suddenly every single part of the way. They're all tangled together. This is not pretty. So I'm, I look like I'm a real hog here. You're welcome. Don't worry, I won't throw them in because I can't get them loose unless they ever go find them on football. But he showed the full extent of his love as it touched each and every one of them. There you go! For those of you who are napping on me right there, ready? Pull back up 30 seconds, ready? He showed them the full extent, he showed them the full extent of his love. Think about it, he touched them. Go ahead, you try to look at this thing without hitting yourself once in a while. Huh? The full extent of his love, he showed them. Slick. I'm so proud of those of you who got that one there. He pulls down his lot, doesn't stop. <laughs> but friends, the place we can see where our love ultimately comes from, the kind of love that we hear about in the Bible, the kind of love that we hear about in every single wedding you attend this summer, every single wedding that you're a part of this summer, every single wedding that you watch on TV, the full extent of God's love. It is not about nice, it's not about romance. Well, that can definitely be an indicator of love. It's about the sacrificial love that Jesus Christ gave to us. Him on the cross, dying for us. That's the full extent of God's love. Within, without that love in my life, I am nothing. So to say it again, without love, I am nothing. Maybe that's what the Apostle Paul wrote 1 Corinthians is a letter that he wrote to a church in Corinth. There are at least two letters that we have that are both in the Bible to this church in Corinth. There may have been more letters, but that's something for another day. The letter that we have in the Bible called the book of 1 Corinthians points us to this powerful, wonderful thing that we call love. 
especially with the, with the day of Pentecost, because remember what happened to them? Pacha, they were napping. But what happened to them as they were sitting in that room? Something comes of what happened? Fire touched them, and then they were able to speak. But you know, they were just able to speak with a big French accent, correct? All they knew from say, that's about all I've got. I can do the Swedish accent as well from the uh, Swedish chef and the Muppets, but I make even less sense than he did. You don't know what I'm talking about. I all we can say is this: I am old. We'll move on. In the First Corinthians, it points us to the powerful wonders of love. Because if I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And it goes on and on to describe love. But without love, I am nothing. What I do is nothing. Who I am in relationship to God without God's love is nothing. But Paul's saying here, I'm nothing without love. It's like I'm worthless. I can speak in fantastic languages, but without love, I'm just making no waves. If I, and I'm nothing without love, I can prophesy the future, preach like Billy Graham, and all sorts of secret things. But without love, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without love. I could go broke feeding and clothing and housing the poor, and allow my body to be broken as a martyr. But without love, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without love. We get into our heads that somehow if you get to be on TV, then you're something. There was a study recently that indicated um, teenagers would grab their number one job on a, in, in, on a, a survey that indicated that age group that the number one job they'd like to have would be a, an assistant to a movie star. I don't even want to be the movie star of the surveys indicating that I just want to be near Hollywood as if somehow that gave you meaning and purpose. <laughs> Stories I hear about assistants to the stars in Hollywood is pretty bad. It's almost as bad as being the children's ministries director having to deal with Pastor Brian, right, Sandra? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> we'll move on to that one. I don't want to hear that truth. Without love, I am nothing. Our world settles for a whole bunch less than the incredible love of God. John Wooden put it this way. To the famous USCLA men's basketball coach, he died on June 4th. And one of the quotes that came across in remembrance of him was this. He died on June 4th, I should say, 2010. A bell isn't a bell until you ring it. A song isn't a song until you sing it. And the love that is in us wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love until you give it away. You, some of you already know the song, huh? Well, love's not love unless you actually act. I'm nothing without love. Not just a feeling, but it's an action as well. Love is an anything you give it away. I'm nothing without love. The annual conference last night where most of us were starting to tune out, or for me, my phone was becoming way too intriguing, they suddenly brought forward someone who described how powerfully God had moved in their life. Jen had been a very successful warrior. Financially, she was well off. Her success in her field was incredible, to the point that she had it all together. But she didn't have love in her life. She didn't know love from anyone else, and she didn't know the love of Jesus Christ. Jen looked great when she went to work, incredibly successful, and every night after work, she went to the bar to get drunk. Life was so empty, that was her goal. Life took a, change, a turn for the worse when one night when she was going to the bar to get drunk, she was T-boned in her car by a drunk driver. How in the world she got home every night from the bar, drunk driving is another story. But because of the accident and the amount of injuries that she had, she began using pain killers. At first, it numbed the pain, numbed the pain, I should say, from the accident. But the pain killers and the alcohol began, began to numb the pain. Inside. Jen described that her life was so empty that suicide became a real option, that she didn't know where to turn, and finally she heard someone who invited her to go to AA. She didn't think she had a problem with alcohol, but she was being drunk every single day. She didn't think she had a problem with narcotics, and yet she was on painkillers and whatever method she could get them. But she constantly 
per the indication of how they responded to her friend. Her friend took her to AA, and that's the first time she heard about the love of God. Not at church, not from Christians at work. The first time she heard about the love of God was at AA. She ended up having to move, got involved with a thing called Celebrate Recovery in the Blairsville area. And God began to change Jim's life. Because it just, instead of just hearing about the love of God, she encountered it firsthand. To the point where she was able to speak about her past in front of a thousand people that she didn't know on a Saturday afternoon. How many of us would be willing to do that? God changed her life. When she was up front, though, the thing that she said that stuck with me until this morning was this. No one had loved me enough to tell me about God. Did you hear that? A woman who looked like she had it all together, whose life was falling apart. <clears throat> the words she said to us were these No one loved me enough to tell me about God. Your assignment for this week is a repeat from last week. But, friends, take me seriously. Real love means you actually act. Real love is, in the words of DC Cock in a song that's way too old at this point in my life, love is a verb. We don't act on it. It's not what we love. It might be a feeling. So here's your assignment. To choose to accept it, intentionally show someone God's everlasting love. Serve them, or listen to them, or tell them about Jesus. Jen's words terrify me. No one will be known. But it doesn't have to be with your mouth. Because quite honestly, love without truth behind it, when we talk about the love of Jesus and we don't act like it, it's pretty empty. God can still overcome it, but love takes over so much more. We'll talk about how love can work in our lives this summer as we focus on this whole summer of love. But here this this morning, I am not without love. Jen, the lawyer, the alcoholic, the child of Jesus Christ said in the past, no one will love her enough to tell her about God. And yet, she was at that point where she knew it for reality. I am nothing without love. Thanks be to God that God moves and works in our lives, that God's not kept on up with us, that God is actually just wants to know him, that God, in this that first kind of class day, touched them with fire. Oh, I'm sorry, did I catch a nap? Did I catch a sleeping? Because God touched them with fire. We had seen the fall of sleep on what God's done in our lives, haven't we? And yet, God is touching their life. You can go ahead and keep doing it. Whack the person next to you. They'll just love it. Rug burns or whiplash or whatever this might be. But think about the incredible love of God. You and I have that chance. And somebody else might actually feel the incredible love of God. Because, friends, without the love of God, I am nothing. Which the opposite of it tells me this. I am something. Because of the love of God. Amen. Let's pray. I encourage my friends to close your eyes, turn your hands up for heaven, and talk with God. Let's pray. And I would ask you to repeat after me. Lord God, love you, Father. I love you. Thank you for love that lasts. Thank you for love that lasts. Thank you for love that's meaningful. Thank you for love that's meaningful. Thank you for Jesus' sacrificial love. Thank you for Jesus' sacrificial love. Empower me to love others deeply. Empower me to love others deeply. Without love, I am nothing. Without love, I am nothing. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, let's sing together as we worship together. Let's stand as we sing.
I am nothing without love. May God the Father, may God the Son, may God the Holy Spirit move and work with you that you know the incredible love that God has for you. Not know about it, but to know this incredible love. And my friends, I'm nothing without love. If I live a life which looks really good to everybody else, but it's without love, I am nothing. So, you leave her today. May God fill you with God's love. As you leave her today, may God move through you that others might feel his love on you. Don't look too scared. I'm not going to whack you. <laughs> Although the times I guess my friends when you show the incredible love of God to somebody, it will feel like you'll whack them. That's not the purpose. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you graciously. May the Lord turn his face towards you in the midst of you knowing God's incredible love. Thank God. Amen and amen. Thank you.